When you did what you did, I'm going to suggest you did the right things, absolutely the right things, but without the knowledge that the whole system around you was corrupt. And the second thing was that the media did not support you. Well, we've got a solution to that. We create our media. Now, I can tell you that this little newspaper has got the local Plymouth paper shitting themselves because the Evening Herald, it is widely rumoured and alleged, is losing 8% of sales a year because they are not reporting anything worth reading. And in this paper, we've done an editorial pointing out how rubbish the paper is. So this coming out once a month at between 10 and 15,000 copies is frightening the local paper. But the other thing we did is we've gone to talk to individual reporters over a beer, over a cup of tea, and said, look at the paperwork yourself. And they are now very interested that their paper is being controlled by common purpose to the extent they're now telling us what's going on. Can't tell you any more because I shall spoil things, okay? But what people are trying to do is to change a whole organisation by going to the top. But those, that's where the corruption is. If you go into a police station, as this man has done, and we want it to happen, and he says, I want to report treason, and then the copper says a load of bluster, and he's not going to do it, you're all misprison of treason, you're guilty of treason then. What's your name? Wallop, he's going to appear in the paper. And I have been stunned at the reaction when you put the stories in the paper. We've had two people who've phoned us up and sworn at us, and the other phone calls have been from people who said, I want to tell you, I want to tell you about this. I've got paperwork, I've got documents. So the other bit that we're using as the lever is the fraud and corruption. They are creating fraud and corruption. And if you show people your taxes are going here, they get very interested, and then they ask a magic question, why? And you say, oh, well, that's easy. That's common purpose. What the f is that? You don't know what it is. You then tell them what common purpose is. Well, where's all that come from? The European Union. And you've got them up five steps in about a ten-minute conversation. So it's getting in. You were doing the right thing, but at the wrong time because the ground wasn't fertile. We've got some different ways. Good gentleman over here. Can we have one? This is one one last question. I'm sorry, but we, we are aiming to, to conclude at four o'clock. Just short. Fascinating as this is. So if we can take this as the last question, thank you. I wasn't aware of the full activities of the common purpose, but looking uh, at some of the names that have been put up, is there any influence from the Bilderberg group in respect to this? Uh, well, I, I believe totally, um, but. If I say I know something, I know it because I can prove it. I'm going to say I believe in this case because you start getting into circumstantial evidence. Do I believe the Bilderbergers are real? Most certainly. Do I believe they are a fascist-based organisation? Most certainly. Do I believe they're very dangerous? Most certainly. Do I see links between the people linked to the fraud and corruption and top level of common purpose associated with Bilderbergers? Yes. And to change the subject slightly, it was very interesting that Ed Balls was reported in the paper as using public money to attend a Bilderbergers meeting. Bilderbergers say themselves that people attend as individuals, but he used public money to attend in his official capacity. Wasn't that remarkably similar as the man of the government office Southwest, who said, I am a member of common purpose in my... There is a, there is, when you follow it through, there's a style. And I believe the Bilderbergers are clearly there. So is the Council for Foreign Relations. And so is definitely is the Tavistock Institute. Yeah, but of course Mr. Blair was chairman of the Fabian Society. And if you follow the Fabians through, you're back in the same mess. Could I just mention about Ed Balls? Our previous chairman for 23 years, when I say our campaign for independent Britain, Lord Stoddart, yep. has just recently raised that question um, in Parliament about 
who financed uh, the Ed Ball's visit to, to Bilderberg. He's asked for all of that. So well, as yet we, we're waiting for a statement. Well, it was, yeah, but it was reported in the press, and in fact, I've also reported it. I, I'm going to be a little bit careful here, but I want to say this. Lord Stoddart was given some material on common purpose. Now, I have a problem. If I give people a little bit, they say that's not enough. Where's the proof? If I give them a lot, though I'm too busy to read that. Now, Lord Stoddard was given what I regarded was a package in the middle. And what he said was, this man, Brian Gerrish, has said that a company set up in Plymouth City Council called the Single Regeneration Budget Company has spent 51 million with no proper audited accounts. Lord Stoddard said, I believe, in my opinion, that cannot possibly be true. And therefore, I don't believe what he's saying on common purpose. But unfortunately for Lord Stoddard, what I say about the 51 million is true, and I can prove it. We have got to fight, and at the moment, we are not fighting because people do not understand how serious it is. I am going to preach a little bit, but I have wasted tens of thousands of pounds of my personal money on UKIP to discover the higher levels of UKIP attending common purpose courses or, or, or facilities. I am seeing people talk about the European Union as if it's a boys club. It isn't. And the real threat to this country isn't Brussels, it is what is happening in your local council. If you solve the problem in your local council first, the rest will solve itself. But we need to act very quickly because we are dealing with people that our parents dealt with and they understand their mentality is murder. And I'm sorry if you find that a depressing subject on a Saturday afternoon, but when we give talks, we talk in this language. And I guarantee you, after every meeting, we have people coming to us saying, tell us what we can do. But what is happening in a lot of the organisations that I see, I will leave it that broad, is people are still frightened to use the language. This country is being attacked. And the people who are attacking us want to destroy our society. They want to destroy our schools, hospitals, children. And that is the level of understanding you need before you can start to move forward. Can we beat them? Yes. Good. Good. By his own admission. He had gone stale. He's 80. He stepped down. He continues to do fantastic work. He, he couldn't make the connection between common purpose uh, and the EU. Uh, now we have moved on. We have a very, very dynamic new chairman, Dr. Bob Spick. So you will find a considerable difference already. I very little about it. I feel now very much better informed, and I thank you for that. And I'm sure that we all feel the same way. So. Thank you. Yes, demanding a referendum on the European Constitution. Um, and while Ed was over there, thank you very much indeed. It was one of those, one of those for you. And before we finally wind up, I'd like to ask Edward to say a few words about an important event that take place near Parliament, and it will be followed by a meeting in the Queen Elizabeth the Second Conference Centre, which will cost ten pounds per head. So we hope that as many of you as possible will attend that conference, which will have some lively speakers, including, I think, maybe. Indeed, I believe 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 I